Hey all, Board Game Rants here, where you'll find everything solo, tabletop, gaming, and more. We're going to take a look at Roll for the Galaxy using a fan-made solo variant. Let's have a look, and I'll let you know what I'm thinking on the other side. All right, Roll for the Galaxy and the Ambition expansion there really just, just adds more good stuff. For that doesn't hard, doesn't change much, uh, except for it also adds these objective tiles, which is a big part of uh, of the change there. But it gives you some goals to go after while you're playing the game. But roll for the galaxy. So if you've ever played race for the galaxy, then this is I would say an easier version of that and a much more tactile version. This right here, this little sheet that I'm moving around here, this is the not included with the game. This is the solo variant that I'll be showing you that I've been playing almost exclusively. And it is uh, a little printout here. You can go on BGG and get this. It's just, it's extremely straightforward. There's even a more straightforward solo variant that I started with and I played like halfway through the game and uh, and and then realized, okay, I'm going to want something a little a little more... And this was that that perf that perfect little more there. So, anyway, you need to print this out. This is uh, it says you know this variant takes the excellent rule set by Dale Brunacore or um, Elad on BGG. This is there was no there's nothing printed on here, but this is um, pa past pastor bin or pastor bin on BGG. I I think did this variant of the variant. <laughs> So and then and then quite frankly, there's there's no adding. This doesn't have ambition in it. This doesn't you know add in rules for ambition. So I'm playing a variant of the variant of the variant here. Anyway, so moving on. Very generally, when you're playing, you're going to be rolling some dice. Then you're going to be choosing one action out of the five that that you definitely want to take. And then you're going to see what the the bot is going to pick. It's going to pick at least one other action, and then, uh, and then you're going to activate your dice, and then, and then that's going to allow you to put tiles out, or if you have tiles out, you're going to be able to produce goods and then score points or earn money. Money is going to help you purchase the dice that you've used to be able to re-roll again, and then victory points are there's a set amount of twenty four when you're playing with two players. The other way you can win is by getting a total of 12 tiles out. This little your little home base there, or, or, or starting faction tile, counts as two. So you've got three already. You know, once you get nine more out there, a total of 12 of these little tiles, then the game ends at that round, and, and you score your points. Whoever's got the most victory points, and you know, there's counting up points basically is like if these were out, I'd have six, nine, 10, 11, you just count up. It's basically the cost to put them out there is how many points you score for them at the end of the game, plus any any victory points that you've you've gotten here. These count as one, the little guys, and then you got fives, etc. So there's also some developments that have these, these little diamond shape. Those are not planets, those are developments. There are only two types of tiles. There's developments and planets. And some planets that have the little the colors in them, you can actually produce goods on. You can't produce goods on ones that don't have colors. And then at the bottom of these tiles, sometimes they're going to have little powers that they give you. More often than not, they just kind of give you a one-time benefit. But when they when they give you a, a, a persistent benefit, it'll tell you what phase it occurs in. Again, those are the five different actions you can take. One, two, three, four, five. It'll, it'll highlight which one it's pertinent, and it'll tell you what it does. So it's pretty pretty straightforward here and it's pretty cool too because in this game rather than having you know separate separate tiles for for you know planet tiles and separate development tiles sort of like race for the galaxy has you know one card only does you know one one thing or the other here it's pretty uh compact you got a planet on one side and a development on another when you draw these out of the bag you have to decide what you want to do with them if you want to put them as, as planets which you put them in a little circle spot or if you want to Put them in uh, as in a here. You they they count as nothing. You actually have to put dice on these in order to bring them out into your galaxy. 
So I'd need to have three dice on this to officially place space refineries out in play. So that is, I guess, the gist of it. And here is the big bag of this guy. This is where you'll find all your tiles here. And the AI over here is, is, and again, I'm playing a variant of the variant because usually the AI would just start with a random homeworld tile. And, uh, but I've added this to make the difficulty a little bit more for you because uh, so, so, the, so the AI can end the game quicker by getting 12 tiles out faster when I've thrown this little faction. Also, too, it gives it some, some extra money to start with because to, to help offset the advantage that I have here with being able to do these tiles here and complete them for even more points. So, so I've fiddled with this variant and I've played it well over 10 times now to try and create a difficulty to taste and... And it, and it works pretty well, but uh, the games are also pretty, pretty fast, fast enough that I can just, okay, well, hmm, I, I blew it out of the water that time. Let's uh, ramp up the difficulty. Maybe I'll, you know, one variant I've played before, if you really want to make it tough, is any, uh, any of these objective tiles that I don't get at the end of the game, I give those points to the bot. And those, the points they'll basically get are these, however many of these little asterisks are there. So, so how you play the game, again, is, well, just give you an idea, um, you know, I start off, you each, each, depending on, at the beginning of the game, you're going to draw a random one of these from that huge stack there. You're going to draw a random one of these from that big stack right there. And then you're going to draw six of these objective tiles. And then, and then the bot's going to get a random and a random. And then it'll tell you, you know, your, what, what, uh, maybe a little power you've got there. It'll tell you what extra dice you get. You sort of start off with a generic number of dice, but then you might, um, based on your, your starting planet stuff, you'll get extra dice or whatever. And then you draw two, two tiles and you got to pick one to be a world, one to be a development. And the AI kind of works similarly. And for the AI though, it's very, it's very simplified. And, uh, so what we have here action wise, so explore. That allows me to draw more tiles out of here to have the potential to build more planets or developments. That's how I'm going to replenish my, my little construction site here where I can add dice to and finally get them out in my galaxy. Develop, that's where you just actually take dice and, and you put them on. you got to put the number there on, of dice on there to actually develop that. And the same, very straightforward. Here's a uh, settle. Settle is how you put worlds out. You put your dice on there. I'd have to put six dice on this thing to, to bring it out and count in my galaxy. And then produce and ship. So produce, uh, producing allows you to put dice on. And when you put a dice on a colored planet, it counts as one resource, basically, of that color. And the colors have varying values. Blue is, is the lowest value and yellow is the highest value. So you can see right here, you know, if I were to, I'd get, uh, if I trade, um, I'd get three money for blue goods, four for brown, five for green, six for yellow. And then points wise, you basically can score the same amount of points with any color. It just depends on if the color of the die matches the plant that you put it on matches the ship that you use to ship the goods. So once you've got goods on here, now it matters what I use to either to to ship it. It totally matters what I use to um, I got to have a little a little ship symbol. So I use this to ship this. I would get one. You always get one. Then I get another one for matching the color and I get another one for matching the color. So I get three victory points from that 24 pool there. But if I was just using this as a good, well, it wouldn't matter, you know, what, what color I've got on there. And it really wouldn't matter what ship color I use either. I would just ship that good. And then I would get green. I'd get five money. And I would just ratchet this sucker up. And that's going to allow me again, once you, once you use dice, you know, be it here, you put them, you put them over here in the exhausted section. If I use dice to, to create a development, then they slide, this gets put over, then these slide over here, and they have to, again, be unexhausted by, by paying one credit per one that I can exhaust and roll again for next turn. So the sort of the cycle of, of rolling dice 
using them here to do your stuff, score your points, put worlds out, put developments out, and then they get put in the exhausted spot. And then you got to use money to bring them back out so that you can roll them again for the next turn, which of course, you know, as you have more dice out there, the better. So like if I were to roll dice here, the way you, you basically choose what you're going to do is first, whatever you roll, you put it underneath the action that it matches. That little money symbol means that if I actually use that dice to explore, I'll get it right back. I won't have to pay for it. I won't have to exhaust it first. So that's kind of a little special power in the ambition. So that's a development die. This is this is rolled up and and you know the different color dice have different symbols on them. They give you different. Some have, some of them have wild symbols on them. That's this symbol there, and I, I'd be able to use it for anything. But once you once you put out your dice like this, then I have to pick like oh maybe I want to produce. So I have to pick one of these dice to to put up in this little slot up here, and then I'd be able to actually do that action, guaranteed. Only the action that I selected and the action that the bot is going to select are actually going to happen this turn. But that wouldn't be a very good move. What, it, what I might do here is I might use that to activate the production action. I can only activate one. And then each turn also you can dictate, which means basically I can throw away a die and put it back in my cup in order to move one of these dice around and I can just make this say an explore action. So boom, I've done that. Now I have a chance to explore, get more tiles or produce and ship. It depends on what the bot's going to do. So now I'll roll for the bot. So when, before you roll for the bot, you just got to adjust these little things so you can know if the bot's going to do something over something else, you know, it has a preference. And so it says, uh, look at the number of stacks and add one. Well, both these stacks, there's a development stack, and a world stack are full. So one, this is on the one. And number of tiles in development stack, there's one here. Number of tiles in the world stack, there's, or settlement stack, there's one there. So these are on the ones. And I'm just using just any dice. You can use any, any, anything. You can use a little rock if you wanted to. But um, how many worlds can the AI produce on? Well, one, two, it can produce on two worlds. So I put that there. How many goods does it have to ship? None. So I put that there. So if I roll a wild symbol, it's going to go for the one the furthest right, and then the third tide will go top down. So if I roll a, a wild symbol, which I did not, it would have been produced, but he rolled a produce action anyway. So these go up in the green section. And so now we, uh, we've got the two things. Uh, sometimes there's three that get activated, like if it had rolled, you know, something, something else like that. Well, then this would be activated, settle. I'm sorry, explore, settle, and produce would have been activated. But it went like that. So there's only going to be this one's going to activate, this one's going to activate, this, my shipper, will not. So this is going to go back into my dice. I'll be able to roll that because it didn't get exhausted. But that's why I had these here, because I was hoping I might take advantage of, if it rolled explore, that I might be able to do a little exploring first. Now, uh, the actions have been selected. You work your way left to right. The bot always goes first. The bot is going to draw a tile and get two money. So we just draw a tile randomly from this bag. It's always going to put in a stack that it has less of, but if it's tied, like it has one and one, then it's always going to put the world. And so it's going to put this world stack under there. And then it's going to get two credits. That's going to help it, of course. That's how, that's how the AI pays for, for it'll pay two to put that development out if it takes the development action. It'll pay two to put this world out if it takes a settle action. So it pays by using its credits. So it's a little different, but it's way easier and more streamlined to, to work that way. So AI has done it. Then I would do my actions. This would get exhausted. This, though, would go back in my cup to be rolled because it was used for the explore action. Then the AI would go over here. The AI would produce a couple. So it would just you know, produce. You don't have to match the colors I always like to do, but the AI produced times two, it says. And it has that. So it's done. Then I would produce. This would go on my... Now I've got a blue good on my Galactic Scavengers world. And then... Uh, now I've got, you know, three dice to roll over here. I'd come over and I look and I, I exhaust. I can spend one credit to get a die back. I will do it. And then uh, and then you go again. I mean, it's just that easy and it's that fast, too. Of course, you're going to get more dice out here to roll. But and, and, and things get a little more involved 
like, uh, you know, I got you got to keep an eye on your powers and stuff here. But the AI, you don't have to worry about any of that. The AI is just a, a machine at making money and putting tiles out. And then also, too, uh, once it has tiles out, it'll start producing and shipping and, and getting money and goods that way. Very easy to very easy to do, though. That is about and then, yeah, and then you can incorporate this however you want in this variant. Um, it just adds and you don't even have to play with those. You can just play with the extra goodies, the extra cool dice that, that the expansion comes with. It gives you like two options, you know, and oh, uh, anyway, you can really suit and match this to taste. That's uh, one of the things I really like about this variant and the game Roll for the Galaxy. I love this game. I mean, there's just I played halfway through the base game using the simplest solo variant. I was halfway through and I stopped and I ordered the expansion, Ambition. I, I just knew. I just knew. And this is before I even tried the variant that I, that I showed you that I, I actually ended up playing. And I played in the teens already. And <laughs> just <laughs> this is just my kind of game. It's fast. The decisions are, are fun and quick to make. There's just enough actions that have just enough complications mixed with well, now, with the objective tiles, I would definitely suggest getting Ambition. It just adds more good stuff, more tiles and more dice and more variability. I mean, it's just a, a, about as perfect as expansions <clears throat> come is Ambition. I haven't gotten, I think, Rivalry. Uh, it just, yeah, I, mean, I may. I, I will probably likely eventually, but I think Ambition has just definitely really fleshed out the game and made it just, just, just damn near perfection. And the fan-made variant, the solo variant, is fantastic. Now, you may not want to start with the one that I showed you, even though it's extremely easy to implement. First, to get to know the game, you might just use the, the very, there's a very simple variant. And it's a little more high rated, too, actually, on BDG. That, but it's just it's so easy, which is great. So they really just learn the game. And then, I mean, it'll take you two minutes to learn how to run the AI. I mean, it just takes that long to read the rules for the AI. So that's a great way to just introduce, introduce yourself. I had already played uh, Race for the Galaxy. I mean, that came out over 10 years ago. It was, it was one of the first games that came out, well, in one of its expansions with an official solo variant. It's a bummer that this one didn't, but I'll tell you what, this, this, this solo variant is just fine. I mean, it's just... It's just, it's so good. Why? Well, first of all, setup is, uh, you know, you, you'll probably spend, I mean, it's just an easy setup. You're going to, you're going to spend five, 10 minutes setting it up and then five minutes resetting it. Uh, and then you're going to go again and you're going to go again and then you go again. And the table space that it takes up is, I don't know, you can, you can have it, you can shrink it in there pretty, you know, the, the table space for the AI is what takes up maybe more room just because you've got that little mat thing. And by the way, too, there's a better mat that you can download. So I've seen people just just really go all out for the solo variant. And, and you know, I probably won't. This little mat, which I just printed on a little kind of cardstock paper, is fine. And it does the same thing. It just doesn't look as gorgeous. But... I don't know. So it's an option for those people that really like something to look really snazzy. You might you might check out uh, some of the it's just this the love that has gone in, and this has been out for a while too. This game has been out for over five years, I think. Um, Roll for the Galaxy, Race for the Galaxy was has been out for over a decade. So I already knew what I was getting into. I loved Race for the Galaxy. I love Race for the Galaxy. I had I think I have it in all of its expansions. Gosh, I haven't played that in a long time, though. That was one of the games I played the most multiplayer. And I played against uh, just basically two-player. And the guy I played against, he kicked my ass most of the time. And I didn't care. I just loved the game. He was better at it than me, but I just loved the game. And Roll for the Galaxy is that, you know, oh, just but 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 it just adds all the all the elements of the dice rolling. And the, there's just so much you can do with the dice, too. The dice do not, like, ruin your strategy sometimes it makes it a little more difficult but there's so many ways you can just move this there and that and there and this and that and that and it's just just oh and and you know you can just go for certain dice and certain dice colors and oh, this is this is a fantastic solo game i mean if you got this game and you're like you know it doesn't have an official solo variant you just use one of these solo variants 
And if you're into Race of the Galaxy, I think you're totally going to be into Roll for the Galaxy. And uh, But now you get all the colorful goodies and the knickknacks and the tiles and everything's clacking and smacking and making all those cool sounds that non-card games do. But Race of the Galaxy, I think, is, is probably the more involved game. It's probably the deeper game. And anyway, this is about Roll for the Galaxy. So length of play, 45 minutes to an hour. And, you know, there's been some games where it's just like, you're just putting out tiles, tile, 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 and you're up to 12 and it's over in a half hour. <clears throat> there's so many different ways that you can play this game. You know, you can go race, get those tiles out, you know, slow down, try and get those objectives, <clears throat> put out a few goods worlds so that you can start producing, producing, and then you can generate, you know, victory points that way. There's all sorts. And then you're going to have the powers on the tiles. As you put tiles out, they have little powers. So that'll direct you how you want to play that particular game. And, and then it's over so quick. And you're just like, I just, I want more. <laughs> Let's do it again. <laughs> and uh, the components are fantastic <clears throat> in this game. And uh, the rule book is, I mean, it's just so, it's just so easy to, to get through. And it's just, it's such a straightforward game. And, but there is so much to the decision process within each thing you know when you're first rolling the dice now you, and then you lay them all out and it's like oh man what am i going to do here what i'm going to go for i can move this die here and then i can activate with that but then i can use my dictate action over here i can set that die to that and i put this order here and, I come in there, and then ah okay now what's the ai going to do nice with this ai variant you can kind of see because if it has a lot of goods that it's produced it's going to want to ship and, it, and, and then you know you know on that one die there's a 50 50 chance it's going to roll wild where it will choose to ship so you can use that in your strategy to kind of play the odds and be like oh it's probably going to activate that ship action so i probably don't need to hmm in light of that what do i want to do it doesn't always pan out but that's some of the cool choices you get to make because of the way this ai variant is done <clears throat> it uh it, it gives you a little a little foreshadowing like that the theme is, you know, it's 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 just awesome. You you are uh, rolling for the galaxy, you know, and you start off with your little faction tile and your starting world, and then you build from there. And you're out and you're exploring, you're developing, you're you're settling. Um, it's all there. The theme uh, is is every bit as is there as as it was for Race for the Galaxy. Mechanics are sound. I mean, it's just it's just was it Tom Lehman? I think it's just uh, it's his signature move. <laughs> There's a lot of games. I think it was what Puerto Rico. I feel like had kind of a was was maybe a game that was done before this that kind of had this this idea of of choosing what action you were going to take. Um, so it's probably not the OG where where that's concerned. But as far as you know, it's taken it took it to a whole nother level. Tell you what. So uh, the mechanics are are sound. The strategy is is so there. Now <clears throat> yes, you are a little at the mercy of. You're drawing tiles and sometimes you're just not going to draw the tiles are going to allow you to complete an objective because you just can't get a six cost development or a five plus cost world or or enough production world or you know something there's but but there's six objectives out there so you're going to find something that's going to help you <clears throat> but if you go the wrong direction you, you know the game's so short you're going to be kind of in trouble but that's fine you know you're going to lose a lot of games so what it's just it's fun it's fun to lose this game i already went through that <laughs> so <laughs> moving on so from, I guess, you know, a solo design, the the AI is implemented wonderfully. I, I, this game is already, you know, does it totally get in your way and stuff? No, it's just enough that you can kind of predict what it's going to do. Because I, I believe in the multiplayer game, you're, you're basically it's like solitaire multiplayer. You know, you can't really mess with each other, which is fine. So, but it would be nice to know you could kind of see with who you were playing against what they were sort of going for. So you'd sort of be able to guess what they were going to do. So you could use your 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 choice for an action, kind of banking on the fact that they're probably going to use their action <clears throat> or their selection to pick a certain action. Because again, you only get to activate two, maybe three. <clears throat> excuse me, of the five different actions there. So you gotta. So this this AI does that for you. It allows you to kind of guess what it's going to do which is it's perfect i mean that's that's all that's really needed to make this this and then of course it scores points and and creates that that pace that race so just all there you know that that this uh, ai variant is wonderful um and then you can mess with it you can you can set the difficulty levels to to your taste you can mess with it in so many different ways you can give it you know like like if it can't take advantage of a certain number of 
of like if it's supposed to get a tile and, and two money, but it's already got money, you can amp up the level and just give it two victory points instead of the two money. You don't have to. I mean, and there's and the way the rules are written, it's defined like what you're supposed to do. But it doesn't have any difficulty level adjustments. And also, too, it does not have a thing for ambition. Now, the easier variant does. So there is the little e the easier variant, which does have some rules that, that allow you to incorporate ambition. And it's very simple. But the variant I was using, you can you can you can make it work. You can make it work. Um, so then it's just very easy to do. So you can you can suit the difficulty level to taste. It's just replayable as all get out. Uh, I have no intention of putting it away here anytime soon. Like I said, I'm in my 13th, 14th play. I don't know. It's just fun. It's just it's just good fun. So that's it. That's roll for the galaxy. I, hopefully I didn't mix those up. It's too easy to mix up race and roll. Anyway, roll for the galaxy. Please let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns down below. Until next time, I'm Board Game Race. Thank you so much for watching. I'm out.